Dragon Freedom has returned home with NASA astronauts Nick Haig, Sonny Williams, Butch Wilmore, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov. They're back on Earth after approximately 17 hours of a return journey from space. The SpaceX recovery ship and team have been waiting for Dragon's splashdown, and they will now make their way to the splashdown location. The teams have been ready and waiting about three nautical miles away, so it's going to take them about 30 minutes or so to make their way and to... SpaceX Freedom, first server in stable one. Copy, stable one. We see the same. It's going to take about 30 minutes for the recovery team to make their way over to Nick, Sonny, Butch, and Alexander, who are still seated and secured inside that Dragon spacecraft there on your screen. Incredible views there of that thermal protection system, or TPS. Um, that Dragon capsule was pristine white color uh, before it departed the station, and we can see how the reentry phase, um, you know, the thermal protection system did its job. Now, if you're wondering what that hole, that like bucket area is, that is uh, underneath the, the side hatch. That is where the main parachutes were stored. So when we saw the Dragon capsule docked at station, it looked very different. Um, that the, the, the panel that protects and covers the main parachutes, that was uh, still intact as well as the panels that enclose where the drogue parachutes are located. We can see those fast Freedom. boats. SpaceX is go for recovery personnel to approach. Expect personnel alongside in the next few minutes. Freedom copies. We can see those fast boats. We weren't kidding when we said they were fast. While it does take about 30 minutes for the main recovery vessel to make its way over to the capsule, these fast boats uh, will be doing a couple of things simultaneously. A couple of them are going to be working to retrieve the parachutes that you see in the background there of this drone shot. Those parachutes will be retrieved from the ocean surface. We want to make sure we... Uh, we are able to pull those out. The recovery vessel there closest to the spacecraft is going to be performing some safety checks. We can see there they're using an instrument that is basically working to detect if there are any hypergolic vapors or fumes that are still residing in uh, and or around the Draco thruster nozzles or, or outlets. Uh, the hypergolic fuel, which is necessary for on-orbit uh, on orbit burns to con to maneuver the the spacecraft. Unfortunately, those hypergolics are um, are are unable to be breathed. They they are toxic, and so this team here is doing those initial safety checks to make sure that it is safe for the rest of the recovery team to approach the spacecraft. They're also checking to make sure that any residuals from the, the pyros are, are safe and um, are not going to cause any issues. We can see the team working their way around the spacecraft to do these, um, event, basically these, these sniff tests on all of those Draco thrusters. And as we continue to await the recovery of our Dragon spacecraft with NASA astronauts Nick Haig, Sonny Williams, Butch Wilmore, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov inside, Dragon has continuously, uh, already rather, uh, autonomously completed several steps to safe itself following splashdown. We are continuing to see uh, Dragon in what is known as Stable One configuration. That's kind of the ideal uh, configuration following splashdown. It's upright, um, and the, the Dragon capsule is in the right configuration for it to be hoisted into the recovery vessel Megan, which you do see a little ways off in your screen approaching. Dragon will continue to remain live on air with you through that recovery process all the way through the point where uh, the crew is extracted from the Dragon spacecraft. Now, if you are just joining us, the mission has gone smoothly so far. Dragon successfully splashed down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida at 2.57 p.m. Pacific, 5.57 p.m. Eastern Time this afternoon. Approximately 17 hours prior to splashdown, Dragon autonomously undocked from the International Space Station, completed a series of departure burns, jettisoned its trunk section, and performed its final burn, the deorbit burn. 
This placed the Dragon spacecraft on a trajectory toward Tallahassee, Florida. Dragon successfully re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, followed by deployment of its parachutes to slow the spacecraft down to a gentle splashdown. We're now going to follow the... Freedom, hypergolf sweeps and unfired ordnance checks are nominal. Rigging is in progress. Approximately 25 minutes until capsule lift. Stand by for PMC with SpaceX flight surgeon. And so what we did just here, there was communications that those hypergol checks uh, were complete. They didn't find any of that upon those checks, so we'll continue to move through the timeline. Next up is a process called rigging, uh, which you see happening right now on your screen. This is when a SpaceX recovery personnel actually works to um, climb aboard the capsule and work through procedures ahead of lifting um, onto the nest um, of the recovery vessel, Megan. We heard it's going to be about 25 minutes or so until that um, lift actually takes place. Okay, Freedom, the next call will be from the SpaceX flight surgeon on Dragon and Ground Private. Pilots there indicating that the crew will have the opportunity to do a quick check-in with the SpaceX flight surgeon. This is standard procedure for every Dragon spacecraft uh, when it returns to the when it returns to Earth. Um, it's just an initial check-in, make sure everybody is doing okay. They will uh, also have another check-in with the with the flight surgeon once they are on board that recovery vessel uh, that you see there in the background. We can now see that SpaceX recovery uh, recovery team uh, member uh, there on top of the Dragon spacecraft. They are going to be working to install plugs in the Draco thrusters to ensure that none of those uh, um, and to ensure that no more uh, hypergolic fumes or vapors come out from the spacecraft. They'll also place harnessing around the spacecraft that are required in order to lift it out of the water. As, go ahead, Sandra. Continuing to get some views of the recovery personnel, uh, both the main, the main recovery vessel, Megan, as well as some of those fast boats that we've discussed previously. It looks like just a beautiful day there out off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Um, weather was pristine. We were able to get undocked from the International Space Station, as expected, at 10.05 p.m. Pacific time yesterday evening. And Crew Dragon has since completed um, steps ahead of its splashdown at 2.57 p.m. Pacific, and we're now stepping through procedures to get Dragon hoisted up onto the Megan recovery vessel and get the crew extracted out of the spacecraft. And you did see uh, some of the parachutes that were um, near the, the spacecraft. Upon detection of landing, Dragon automatically releases those main parachutes to prevent wind from pulling the spacecraft. Dragon then auto automatically safes any pyrotechnics that may still be present on the vehicle and may automatically perform additional minor system reconfigurations. The astronauts will remain seated and in their suits at this point, but the onboard air conditioning keeps things temperature controlled inside the spacecraft so the crew remains comfortable and the communication systems. Freedom, SpaceX, com check. SpaceX, this is Freedom. Yeah. Copy that, Freedom. Have you loud and clear as well, and Dragon to Ground is no longer private. Understand. Thank you. As we saw there on the screen, we have a couple of fast boats uh, in the recovery fleet that have quickly moved into the splashdown location. They are being followed by one of the main recovery vessels, which will move into position upwind of the spacecraft. The two fast boats have very specific roles. <laughs> Excuse me. The first approach is focused on immediate safety inspection, as we saw. They do this um, for spacecraft integrity and checking for any presence of those hypergolic propellant vapors. And this ensures that it is safe for the recovery vessel to approach Dragon. Once Dragon is cleared for full approach, as we heard is the case today, the team begins rigging the spacecraft for water recovery by the recovery ship. 
The second fast boat is responsible for parachute recovery and also serves as a redundant boat to the first one that makes the initial approach to the Dragon spacecraft. As we saw um, a little bit earlier, we were also able to see one of the recovery team members get on a jet ski to help gather up the parachutes that were automatically detached from the Dragon's from the Dragon spacecraft upon splashdown. And it will take a little over 10 minutes for the recovery crew to complete their safety checks. Once uh, complete, the team will begin preparing Dragon to be lifted. And as, as you uh, see, they, they are preparing for that to take place at this point. Um, as part of the preparation for this lift, one member of the recovery team has climbed on top of the spacecraft already so they can attach Dragon's hoist rings and connect to the lifting lines. It will take us less than an hour to raise Dragon to the recovery boat and remove the crew from the spacecraft. After medical checkouts, the crew will return to land within four hours by helicopter. And if no additional medical assistance is needed, the crew will board a waiting NASA plane and depart for Houston. And as we continue to await uh, Dragon to be hoisted up onto the ship, we have a very special treat. NASA Public Affairs Officer Jaden Jennings, who is actually on the recovery vessel and had a bird's eye view of the splashdown today. Jaden, how are you? How was the view from the recovery vessel? Hi, Sandra. How do you hear me? I've got you loud and clear, Jaden. It's so great to hear you. Awesome. So Splashdown, Sandra, was nothing Freedom, short of be advised. spectacular. We are transitioning the forward link. Calm will be unavailable for approximately five minutes. Freedom comes. Thanks so much, Jaden. We did just have some communications uh, letting us know that we'll have about a five-minute um, period where we won't be able to hear from the crew. So please go ahead. Tell us how was the view from the recovery vessel? Absolutely. Yeah, I was mentioning earlier, Splashdown was nothing short of spectacular. And we were stationed about one and a half nautical miles away from the Splashdown zone and had great visuals here on the recovery vessel Megan. We actually saw a little of the smoke trail as the spacecraft was coming in. And then moments later, we spotted those drogue chutes. And this was quickly followed by four healthy white and orange main parachutes. We then tracked Dragon all the way down as it slowly propelled into the ocean. And I think I speak for all of us on the ship when I say a new core memory was made today, and we are looking forward to having Crew 9 on board with us a little later. Jaden, that is amazing. Now, obviously, we are watching it here on camera, and the landing conditions look pretty good, but how was it from your perspective? What is the sea state out there? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we've had optimal conditions for splashdown, and today it is sunny and 63 degrees outside right now with clear skies, light winds, and calm seas. The sea uh, looks absolutely beautiful right now um, and light blue with the sun reflecting from it. And, okay, I think the crew is going to like what they feel weather-wise on this picture-perfect day for splashdown off the coast of Tallahassee. Thanks so much, Jaden. It certainly looks like a beautiful day. Can you tell us a little bit about the journey of the recovery forces to get to this point? Sure. So one unique aspect of this recovery was the onboard training on station conducted for Butch and Sunny to ensure they were ready to return on a Dragon spacecraft. And um, that training covered all aspects of their return, including nominal and contingency departures, uh, the orbit burns, splashdown, and post-landing ops. Uh, which is what this team is preparing for now. As for the recovery teams themselves, we started the day taking a series of helicopters out to the vessel. And as standard, the recovery director and crew support teams were on that first helicopter out and took the time to get everything prepared on the ship. About two hours before splashdown, they deployed those fast boats and jet skis into the water. I was actually on the uh, second helicopter out and we were on the vessel about an hour and a half 
before it splashed down and landed on top of the helicopter pad on the Megan. And the teams have been working diligently across their respective disciplines this week, executing what can only be described, um, in my point of view, as a logistical masterpiece, just ensuring every detail has been in place for Crew 9's return. That is such great news. I'm so glad that you're able there to experience it in person. Now, can you tell us a little bit uh, about what's next to retrieve the crew for the recovery personnel on board? Yeah, Kate, so coming up next, uh, Dragon will be hoisted into the on-deck translation system, or the nest, at the aft end of the ship, and then will be translated pretty quickly towards that egress platform. Uh, we'll perform another series of safety checks as final precautionary measures just to make sure there are no hypergolic vapors present before opening that side hatch. And then once that side hatch of the spacecraft is open, the crew will be assisted out of the capsule one by one from NASA and SpaceX. Freedom, SpaceX, come check. Freedom, got you loud and clear. Thanks, Nick. I've got you loud and clear as well. We have completed our forward link transition. We've all had uh, situations where we've been on a week-long work trip that was extended, uh, but not by nine months. That is exactly what Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams went through in the last several months, waiting to return home after their uh, spacecraft was taken out of commission, out of concerns, an abundance of caution by NASA for concerns over some leaks that it was experiencing. They waited to come home on a regularly scheduled flight, and sure enough, you just saw them do that. We're still watching the crews on these amazing live images from the Gulf off the coast of Florida as a recovery team from SpaceX and NASA work to return these astronauts home once and for all, fly them back to Houston, Texas. You can see right now those recovery efforts are continuing. We saw a splashdown right on time. It was expected to be 5.57 p.m. We can only assume there was a slight delay with some of this transmission. At 5.58 p.m., what felt like on the dot, we saw that Dragon spacecraft crash down into the Gulf of America, formerly known as the Gulf of Mexico. And on board it, Sonny Williams and Butch uh, Wilmore. We'll have much more of our coverage. We'll be right back.